there, friends. Miss Collins. Can you guess? Can you guess what happened? Tell them. Tell them what happened. <laughs> Hi there friends, Ms. Collins here and today we are in my kitchen once again because we are going to be making our own play-doh and then we're going to take it a step further and do some printing with that play-doh that we've made on our own. So stick around and let's make some art. The recipe that I found for this homemade Play-Doh came from another YouTube channel called Sea Lemon and she made a really, really cute video um, that was really, really easy to follow along with on how to make your own Play-Doh at home. So I'm just going to be using her recipe and I will link her information down at the bottom. Mix all of that together. She said in her video that you just kind of have to play with the recipe. If it seems like it's too sticky, you may want to add more flour. If it seems like it's too dry, then you want to add a little bit more water. It's kind of an experiment in itself. Now, once it has kind of all gathered together, her instructions are to start to work with it with your hands. Now this is where you discover if it's sticky or not. If it's starting to stick to you like this, then you probably want to add a touch more flour. Oh yeah, that's awesome. It's not really sticking to my fingers so much anymore. It's definitely pliable. There we go. Once you have your Play-Doh to this state, um, if you watched her video, you'll hear her say that you could just stop here and this can be your Play-Doh, or you could add food coloring. Now, I'm not going to be adding food coloring because I'm going to do something a little different. I am going to separate my Play-Doh into a couple different pieces, and I'm going to use these to actually do printing. The last project that we were really working on was printmaking. Uh, remember, printmaking is where you are transferring an image from one surface to another surface, kind of like a stamp. Um, so I'm going to try to use my Play-Doh to print, and then hopefully some of the color that my Play-Doh picks up, I'll be able to incorporate and change the colors. So. I need some paper, and then you also need some washable paint. Just like everything else that I've brought to you guys so far, this is going to be an experiment for each of us. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So in a little bit of discovery just now on my own, I have realized that if your Play-Doh is more on the moist side, it's going to be very, very hard for the paint or the ink material that we're going to use to want to attach. So I would recommend adding just an extra little bit of flour to your Play-Doh if you're going to be doing this printmaking part. Um, so what I've done is I've just gotten a little bowl of extra flour here and I'm going to kind of knead that into my Play-Doh. I'm going to take my first little nugget of my Play-Doh and I'm going to just shape it into something really basic. Let's start off with kind of like a, a circle, disposable plate for me to put some paint on. I'm gonna grab my first paint here and put that onto my little makeshift palette. Palette's a word that we learned in an earlier video. Pro tip guys, if you put a little dusting of flour on the bottom of your Play-Doh, then it won't stick so badly to your countertop. I'm going to start off by carving my image. Just something very linear, sort of abstract, nothing too complicated. I can start simple and then work from there. So this is going to be the image that I'm trying to print onto my surface here. Uh, I'm gonna use a paintbrush. Um, now in printing, you probably remember that typically you would use ink, not paint. Um, and you would use a roller and not a paintbrush, but I have neither of those things here in my house. So I'm just going to very gently, and it doesn't have to be neat, you're just gonna kind of softly run your paintbrush with whatever color you've decided on over your printed shape here. Now your grooves have to be pretty deep. Um, if they're not deep enough, then your image probably won't show up. Then you're gonna carefully 
pick up your tiny little pancake of play-doh and plop it face down on your paper now don't press too hard I'm just gonna give it a very very gentle pat don't press too hard on that because then your image will just kind of smush all over the place but when you peel up your play-doh you should have something that looks kind of like that I mean your design of course will probably be different but then all of this leftover paint that is on your piece of play-doh you can just kind of mix into it to make it a color so this is why I said I wasn't going to be using food coloring to start off with because I'm going to be changing the color of my play-doh based on the color that I'm printing with I'm gonna do this with a couple different colors and a couple different designs this is definitely one of the more in-depth kind of projects it takes a little bit more work than some of the other ones that I've done but I honestly just wanted to try this for myself I saw that initial how to make your own play-doh video which is fun enough in itself you could just stop there but that inspired me to want to do some printing as well this time around you can see that I have just used a toothpick to kind of carve out the shape of a heart and because Mother's Day is coming up I am going to try and make my heart say mom now if you remember from our lesson that we did in class with printmaking anything that you put on your initial surface is going to be inverted whenever you print it the good thing about the word mom though m-o-m -M, is that it's the same forwards and backwards m-o-m -M. and remember your grooves need to be pretty deep if you're going to have them show up that looks pretty much like mom to me now I'm gonna get a different color. It's a heart, so let's do it red. Pick up some of this red paint. Same thing as before, you're gonna just kind of lightly dust that. Now this is a lot like the ink process that we did when we printed in class, which is your ink, or in my case paint, is going to start to dry immediately. So you wanna work quickly. You can't really take too much time attaching this paint to your surface because it will start to dry and we don't want that we want it to be wet enough at the start that it transfers same thing as before you're going to gently sort of lift it up this one might be a little bit more complicated like this and then the amazing technique of flopping it onto the paper <laughs> pat 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 and then pull her up That's not too bad. This one's for you, mom. <laughs> and all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Now this one should actually be really cool when we're mixing it. Now I have some pink Play-Doh. Awesome. All right, on to the next one. Can anyone tell me what these three colors are? What are these colors called? These three right here. Yellow, red, and blue. primary that's right ding 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 <laughs> red blue and yellow are the primary colors primary means first and they are the first colors because you use these three colors to make every other color it's pretty cool there we go I think that one's my favorite so far last little thing I want to show you because I wouldn't be a very good art teacher if I didn't is what happens when we mix these primary colors together so I'm just gonna pull off a little bit of each so I'll pull off a little bit of yellow and I'm probably gonna get a tinier part of what would be my red it's more of a pink but I want to mix these together and see what kind of color I'm gonna get our red and our yellow together make orange okay now let's try are red know that I'm using the word red lightly guys I, I know that it's more of a pink um, but whenever we add our blue and red together or blue and pink what color is that gonna give us I hope there are many of you that are shouting at your computer right now okay and then our last combo our yellow and our blue we combine those what are we gonna get and this is something you guys could do all day long you could start off with your primary colors and then you could mix 
your secondary colors. And you could go as far to mix your tertiary colors as well. So yellow and blue make green. And there's our little Play-Doh color wheel. How awesome is that? So I hope you guys give this project a try. If you don't make the printmaking part, that's totally fine. You could see that it was pretty complicated, um, but really, really fun. I would recommend doing it. Just make sure you're doing it in a space that is okay to get a little bit messy. Outside of that, of course, always make sure you're sharing what you're creating and having fun while you're doing it. One last thing I wanted to mention, um, this is actually something that I learned from the original video. Um, if you end up working with your Play-Doh and you make something that's just so awesome that you want to keep it forever, like maybe you make um, a little Play-Doh critter, kind of like how we did out of clay in second grade, or maybe you make a pinch pot, or um, whatever it is, if you love it so much and you don't really want to smush it back into your your Play-Doh nugget, then um, you can bake these in the oven and actually keep them forever. Um, this Play-Doh, because it is homemade, will end up expiring. So I think it, I think she said four weeks um, is about how long it'll last. So if you've used it up after that and you want to keep your little uh, creation, then you guys can always, uh, always do that by baking it. And I'll have that information down below as well. So we accomplished a lot today. We made some Play-Doh, we did some printmaking, um, and we also talked about color mixing. So um, hopefully you guys have taken something from this very large, very experimental video. <laughs> um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. And because we're all just dying to know what happens if I combine all of my colors into one. Oh, it's like tie-dye. Okay, new idea. Look at that. That's so cool. Oh, guys. All right, um, I'm not gonna mix it anymore, but I'm gonna keep this guy and I'm gonna keep this guy. I'm gonna store them in some airtight containers and I'm gonna play with them later. I just need to learn how to juggle. <laughs>